Another day, another campus speaker shut down by jackasses. Well, at least it rhymes. <laughs> so, parents, this is what 50 grand a year gets you mindless intimidation by anti free speech cowards. That was Thursday when an ugly mob of seething snowflakes <laughs> surrounded a building at Claremont McKenna College, screaming, banging on windows, all to block a woman from speaking. She had to flee in a van under protection of security. Heather McDonald Sin, writing a book called The War on Cops, which pushes for better community policing and familiarity of neighborhoods, a book I'm sure none of these petulant protesters actually read. The tome is saturated in facts, which terrifies these campus cretins. I mean, why shout her down if her words are baseless? The fear of her facts speaks volumes. But the goal here isn't to challenge the speaker, but to prevent any speaking at all. Debate is secondary to silence. Activists called her anti-black, capitalist, imperialist, and fascist, all to camouflage their lack of depth and to shut her up. They also harassed students and segregated the white protesters. I'd say the lunatics had taken over the asylum, but why insult lunatics? <laughs> a piece of advice to these activists and parents and teachers who support them, every action has an opposite one. Can you imagine what kind of movement you would create by then silencing speech? Because without speech, the only solution, obviously, is violence. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe that's what you'll get. Um, oh this is God. not a winning look, Bob, for liberals. No, but, I, but here's the thing to keep in mind. There is no more conservative school than Claremont McKenna. That's that, what I don't understand. That, that's, I mean, I've been out there giving speeches and booed off that campus myself, not by, but because I didn't like what I said. I mean, physically assault me. But that is, was put together specifically to promote the conservative movement. Now, you can talk all you want about liberals, but there's a lot of students out there. And I don't, You're saying those were conservative students shutting down Heather McDonald? I hardly I, think I would, so. I, if, that, if that happened to Claremont McKenna, crazy. I would see about, about a thousand Claremont McKenna students, the conservatives, coming and whooping them up. I, just, I don't get it. it yeah, the maybe they're not students. Do it. Well, but you know what? Population, that that... The population has changed. No. Also, it was a preemptive right strike. Now. I mean, on Facebook, they had planned. Mm -hmm. uh, That's why I think that they weren't from there. Yeah. I would imagine. I don't know. Heather McDonald is relentless in her facts. Yeah. Like, yeah. impenetrable. By the way, good And this her. is the, the thing that's amazing is Bernie Sanders wants free college. Mm -hmm. Like, free tuition for what? Yeah. <laughs> for that? Insurrection. Yeah. I mean, er Eric, if you're confident in your beliefs, you should welcome any form of debate. That's the way it used to be. Yeah. And it probably should be now, but uh, you know, there's another big test coming up. <laughs> yeah. Ann Coulter oh, is scheduled to speak at, at, at Berkeley. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. The same place that Milo can got. Know, remember that can whole, you imagine? No, but do you remember what happened when Milo tried to speak? In, in advance of that, there was rioting, and they you know, flipped over some cars. I'm going to say And then they said, oh, this is terrible reflection on Berkeley. Well, let's see what happens when Ann Coulter How much time do I got to get out there? Why don't you speak? Oh, they're having, I think, they're, yeah, and I think the Oath Keepers are going there on Saturday to have a counter demonstration. Could get oh, uh, unusual. The problem is, I'm going to pray for it. I think but Kimberly, you know what drives me crazy yeah. here is she wrote a book that essentially defends police officers yeah. because they aren't getting enough factual, their people aren't writing enough about the statistics. So she is actually in the minority in terms of writing about this sort of stuff, and yet that's too much. For the critics. Yes, and by the way, if they actually read the book, there's so many um, really important salient facts that if you have any experience working with police departments and being a former prosecutor like I do, really makes sense. Guess what she's for? Community policing. Mm -hmm. This is something that helps and saying that it, encouraging that police departments become very familiar with the different neighborhoods, go out and meet with the different communities. How is this some, um, you know, inappropriate, fascist, or racist idea? This is talking about being connected to your neighborhoods and understanding them very well and working cooperatively with the people in those communities so they feel that they have a voice, that they're being listened to. Uh, these are all very positive um, things that have shown themselves and proved themselves to be successful across the country when they are implemented. And, and, and also part of the progressive agenda. That's the most amazing thing about it. Community policing has been something that liberals have been looking for for a long, long time. So why would protest something you're in favor of? 
Well, I don't know why. I don't know. Because they, they're, they're anti-police. I mean, they, they, they've evolved to, you know, it's always the cop's fault. They're, they're, right. Well, well a, certain certain segment segment of, a, a, a small segment of it. A small segment of it. I don't right. know but, if it's that small. The scary part is if when you're removing the step, which is communication between anger and violence, yeah. then it just goes from anger to violence. If that's what you want, sooner or later, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. And, and, because if you're not talking to somebody and you're attacking right. them, they will attack she's back. She's asking but, for that. She's saying, hey, let's improve yeah. you know, relations between the police and these communities by having the two talk to each other. Yeah. That's hardly something that's a racist yeah. policy. What does violence bring, though? Attention. Yeah. And the, and the cameras and the spotlights. And that's, that's where they've, they've you, you're right. They've eliminated that step from ideas to mm -hmm. actual action, violence, because the, the talk in between might talk them out of getting the camera to, to follow them around while they break stuff. Greg, the last thing, just really quick, is what's an important idea, too, is she's saying that these ideas, saying that the police departments are, you know, wholesale uh, racist against minorities, it's actually making minorities communities less safe by creating and, you know, mm -hmm. propagating this false narrative forward. It's not helping make those communities safe. All right.